All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe. My name's Austin. The ECB, the European Central Bank, held a press conference yesterday, 71 minutes long, valuable information broadcast live, where the president of the ECB, Christine Lagarde, answered direct questions about two things, answered direct questions about Europe's monetary policies and decisions going forward. Now, what was interesting to me is right around the 53 minute mark. Yes, this journalist right here asked her, what is the ECB's stance on three things? What is their stance on central bank digital currencies slash stable coins? What is their stance on Bitcoin? And what is their stance on cryptocurrency? Listen to her respond and fair warning, she speaks fast. She says a lot and very monotone. So really pay attention to the words. Gentlemen with a blue shirt. Yeah. Thank you, Max Schröers, Börsen Zeitung. And the second one is on, on the digital euro and the discussion about central bank digital currencies. Uh, a statement recently to ECOFIN said that the ECB in the future needs to be prepared in case it's needed. Um, how exactly is this work proceeding within the ECB? Mm. And would, do you expect a digital euro in the coming years, for example, in the next eight? Um. Thank you. For the, uh, on, the, uh, on the digital currency, first of all, I, I would like to pay tribute to somebody who is leaving at the end of the year, who has been instrumental um, at the ECB and way beyond uh, to help us understand a bit better and with more clarity the difference between uh, the bitcoins of this world, the stable coins, and the digital currency. And that, by that I mean Benoit Curé, who has been a member of the governing council, a member of the executive board of the ECB, and who is finishing at the end of this year. He committed a paper which was um, commissioned, if I recall, by the, the G7, but he also very um, ably uh, participated in a paper that was prepared by the ECB that was distributed by uh, Vice President de Guindos at the last ECOFIN, if I recall, which has the benefit in three pages, and I, th I think that's a huge challenge, to you know, draw the line between what we are talking about, uh, between the bitcoins, the stable coins, and the digital currency. And on the latter point, the digital currency, all right, uh, she hasn't quite answered the question yet. She's about to regarding what is their stance on national digital currencies. But let's let's not take for granted that Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and digital assets right now are being asked on the national stage, the world stage, really questions that wouldn't have been asked four years ago, three years ago regarding cryptocurrency. Pretty cool. Uh, but let's listen to her answer. What is their stance on digital currencies? Uh, between the bitcoins, the stable coins, and the digital currency. And on the latter point, the digital currency, um, we have set up a task force, and we will uh, accelerate the effort of this task force, drawing on the resources of the entire euro system, meaning the national central banks that already participate in that research, uh, that have already committed to the project in terms of, of um, experimentation, uh, pilots here and there. So harnessing on all those experiments that have taken place and all the research that has already put into this effort, together with the work that has been done here also, we will, um, I think we're trying to do that by mid-2020, we will identify, number one, the purpose that we, that we have with that. Are we trying to reduce cost? Are we trying to um, uh, cut out the middleman? Uh, are we trying to um, have inclusive finance at, all co at no cost? I mean, there's a whole range of, of uh, objectives that can be pursued. So I think we will start by doing that. Then we will identify the technicalities of it all, uh, which, is, which is not a given, particularly when you talk about a euro system. And I think that there is also great interest outside um, our regional area. Okay, I like it. Notice the question was, will we have a digitalized euro in the next eight years? And her response was, we have a task force on it. We will have an answer by mid 2020, but we're researching it, <clears throat> we're researching it now. She said that the central bank, bank hoped to figure out the objectives for a digital currency before the first half of next year ends adding that the ECB should be ahead of the curve on the matter. 
Before developing a digital euro, the ECB has to set its priorities and determine what it wants to achieve with the task force. So she's saying that there seems to be clear benefits for all this, but they have to figure out exactly what would be the biggest benefits for them. Are they trying to reduce costs? Are they trying to cut out the middlemen? Are they trying to have inclusive finance at no cost? There is a whole range of, of objectives that can be pursued. And now the ECB is looking into it. Now, what I really found interesting is what she said next regarding the game theory for all this, regarding reasons why it's important to her that the European Central Bank gets there first. Other nations are doing it, so gosh darn, for sure, they will be looking into this. And I think that there is also great interest outside um, our regional area. Um, I know, for instance, that uh, Canada, the UK, uh, certainly uh, other countries way beyond are also looking very uh, deeply into that to see if it makes sense, what purpose it serves, and how we can best deliver on it. My personal conviction is that given the de developments we are seeing, not so much in the Bitcoin segment, but in the stablecoins projects, and we only know of one at the moment, but there are others uh, being, being explored and underway at the moment, we'd better be ahead of the curve if that happens, because there is clearly a demand out there that we have to respond to. I like it. Let me know what you think down below in the comments, but it's interesting, the game theory that's in play right now. If one country does it, well, the other countries want to do it first and better. Now, what's interesting to me is, yes, obviously these countries will eventually adopt their own digital currency slash stablecoin. Now, will this impede Bitcoin? I mean, well, this is going to be these governments' response to Bitcoin, making their own permissioned version as these governments adopt their stablecoins. Bitcoin's network effect will only continue to grow, I believe. Let me know what you think. I have news for you regarding the bank ING and Bitcoin. So before we get to the news, whenever we get our next update involving the European Central Bank, any information regarding crypto or Bitcoin, I will make a video. I will let you know. So it's very important. Hit subscribe. Hit the bell notification. You do not want to miss one of our daily videos. Next piece of news, the Dutch bank ING is getting into Bitcoin and crypto custody reportedly. The, Netherland, the Netherlands-based banking multinational ING is developing technology for the custody of crypto assets, according to Reuters. So, so this isn't confirmed yet. Reuters is a very reputable source. The news agency said in a report on Wednesday that sources familiar with the matter indicated the ultimate aim of the initiative, so why ING is getting into crypto custody, the ultimate aim is to provide secure crypto storage facilities for the bank's customers. Now, if this does happen, this will open up a lot of traditional finance legacy clients. It'll open them up to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. The tech, though still in its early stages, is apparently being built by a team in Amsterdam. So this could be big if slash when it comes true. The question I have now is how much, how much of a bull or how much of a bear is ING with crypto now? Well, they're actually pretty bullish. Responding to Reuters in a statement, ING said that it does see increasing opportunities with regards to digital assets on both asset-backed and native security tokens. So it even sees value in altcoins as long as they're security tokens. And ING is taking a particular focus on developing blockchain technology to open up the sector for their clients. Not only that, but also ING is already involved in a number of blockchain initiatives with its dedicated development team saying in April that it's working on private technology called the Bulletproofs to potentially conceal client data. And also, it's also working on blockchain-based trade finance as part of consortium startup R3's Marco Polo project. In January, ING inked a five-year licensing deal with R3 for use of its Corda Enterprise platform. I guess to wrap this up in general, if ING now moves into custodianship of crypto assets, it will be one of the very few traditional financial institutions to have done so. So historically, everything we know about ING, they are bullish on crypto and Bitcoin. 
and now it's being reported that they will be the next one for custody. That is the video for today. My name's Austin. Like always, we'll see you tomorrow.